Hey there everyone, I'm Christian from Rackner. Today I am going to guide you through installing the ISP Config control panel on an Ubuntu server. ISP Config is a robust open source hosting control panel that helps with managing websites, email accounts, DNS, databases, and more, all from a convenient web interface. And the best part, it is absolutely free. So this tutorial is ideal if you've already set up your VPS with Ubuntu 20.04. You'll also need a domain name to point your panel to. If you haven't done that yet, be sure to check out our previous tutorials on ordering a VPS with Racknerd and pointing your domain name with the DNS methods to follow along. Now let me share my screen here and let's dive into the tutorial. All right, the first step is configuring the host name and host files to ensure everything runs smoothly. So your server's host name should always include a subdomain such as panel.racknerdtv.com because using a domain without a subdomain can create issues later in the setup process. Now let's start by editing the forward slash etc forward slash host files to verify or adjust its content. Please use this command to open the file in a text editor. This file should include the server's IP address, the full host name, and the subdomain. For example, if your host name is panel.racknerdtv.com, edit this portion of the text, just replace it with your own details, or simply add the information to the bottom file. Now save the file using your keyboard by pressing Control and the letter X and Y and Enter to confirm. And after saving the file, edit the forward slash etc forward slash hostname file using this command. This file should only include your hostname's subdomain, such as in my case. Save the changes how we did earlier and reboot your server to apply the updates. Use this command to reboot. Once the system is back online, verify the hostname configuration by running this. These commands should return panel and panel.racknerdtv.com. Next, ensure that you've set up an A or quadruple A record with your DNS provider that points the subdomain to your server's public IP address. Again, I will put the link in the description down below so you can check it out to proceed. Once done, it is time to update our server and ensure everything is up to date. To do that, just run these commands here. Now it's time to install ISP config. If you prefer Apache as your web server, then run this command. If you prefer Nginx, modify the command as follows. But in our case, we will use nginx, so just run the nginx commands if you want to follow along. Now, during the installation, you'll see a warning stating that the script will reconfigure your server. To proceed, type this, and then hit enter. The installation process may take some time, so just be patient. And once complete, the installer will provide you with your credentials, including your ISP config mail and admin password, as well as your MySQL root password, as you can see in my case. So now you can manage your hosting environment efficiently using the web interface via your server's hostname, colon, and port 8080, or in my case, here. But we're not done yet. Before we let our SSH console go, we need to delete the log files in our temp folder once you don't need them anymore because they contain sensitive data, including your passwords. To do that, just run this. And finally, the last step is to configure the firewall. Now, log into the ISP config control panel using your credentials. Please log in as admin, username, and your admin password provided earlier in the SSH console. Once you're in, navigate to the firewall settings via the system, then firewall, then click add new firewall record. ISP config will automatically generate the normal setup for you. For advanced setup, I would recommend you go through their documentation on their site at this URL. We'll also put it in the description down below. And that's pretty much it. Your Ubuntu server is now ready with ISP control panel installed and configured. Congratulations. In our future videos, we will explore ISP config and installing WordPress through it. So stay tuned for future videos. Remember, if you encounter any issues, have any questions, just comment down below and I will do my best to assist you. And don't forget to visit Rackner.com for reliable hosting solutions and subscribe to Rackner TV for more tutorials just like this one. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.